they didn't bring up, like some of these things I thought were very important, it's good to bring them up. You know, things like at the same age. And then here, just discuss spiritual and material anger. Well, spiritual anger, of course, would be using our anger. When, when are we justified to use anger? In what situations are we justified to use anger? No, it's back is compromised. No? When your back is compromised. When Krishna is offended or devotees are offended or mistreated. Yes, that's right. When a devotee is being attacked or offended, we should try to defend that devotee. That is our duty. You know, if we go on Harinam Sankirtan and one of the young ladies is there dancing and a young man, um, another man comes up and you know, grabs her, pulls at her, we should defend the lady. We should defend our devotee, right? Yeah, we should want to defend the, the devotee. It's our duty. If we see a devotee being attacked, we should want to defend that devotee and help him. So that is proper use of so anger. Hanuman used his anger against Ravan in the service of Lord Ramachandra. And Arjuna used his anger also at the battle of Kurukshetra to fight on, under the order of Lord Krishna. So that was proper use of anger. However, we have to be very careful about using anger. Sometimes people think, oh, we can use anger in the service of Krishna. But without being the master of the senses, then it will be very dangerous for us to try to use anger. If we're not in control of our mind and senses, then the anger will control us. We will become controlled by that anger. And but it, what was, how is it described in the Bhagavad Gita? Anger is described. What's it really? While contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them. From such attachment comes lust. lust. And from lust comes anger. anger. So, anger is the younger brother of lust. First comes the lust, then comes the anger. When the lust is not satisfied, we become angry. And there are, th Bhagavad Gita also describes three gates to hell. What are they? Lust, anger, and greed. Yes. And so anger is one of the gates to hell. But we heard this morning also that anger can be used in the service of Krishna. It can be spiritual. But Material anger is simply using it, you know, you get, maybe you have a child, you get angry at your child, you know, it's not good, you know, we have to control the anger. You have a quarrel with your wife or your husband and you get angry, it's not good, we have to control that tendency. Mm. So that's material anger. But spiritual anger is where we use our uh, anger for the protection of the devotees and to defend the honor of Lord Krishna. Okay. And why did the Kumars curse the doorman? We discussed this morning, right, that the, the, the doorman would not give them entry into Vaikuntha. So the Kumars considered that these doormen are seeing duality. They're not qualified to be dormant. And they said they're not fit to be inhabitants of the Vaikuntha planet. They should go to the material world. And then we spoke also about dealing with disharmony among devotees in ISKCON. A very complex problem. But it can also be overcome 
if people are willing to take part in hearing and chanting. Generally when people become disharmony, when there's disharmony, it's due to a lack of spiritual practice. They're not doing enough sadhana. That is the problem in our society, that people become weak. They don't give the proper time for sadhana. They won't spend the time to chant and to hear. They, they, have, they say have no, no taste. Why they have no taste? Because they don't do it enough. You have to do it, right? The Nectar of Instruction says that we have the jaundice, the jaundice of ignorance. And when you have jaundice, have you had jaundice before? Yes. Yeah, I've had it too. It's not very nice, is it? I got it all. Oh, oh, huh? I had A. Well, you jaundice A? A. A? Yeah. Huh? So, how did you cure it? No, it just goes away by itself. Um, well, the, there is a, a, a cure for jaundice. You know, jaundice is the disease of the liver. I got it in India. I went to India first time and it was so hot in the summer, you know, it's like 50 degrees and I'm not used to so much heat. I'm not, you know, I'm from England, it's not so hot there. <laughs> it's cold country, you know, so, you know, and uh, my goodness, I was in Delhi in the summertime and it was just unbearable for the first time, you know, 50 degrees. You know. And, and, the, and this was early, and many years ago, there was no bottled water and you're supposed to boil water. I wasn't careful and I must have drank some water which was not so pure and I got jaundice. I didn't, uh, doctor, went to the doctor, doctor said, no, there's no medicine. He said, you, <laughs> but when I went back to the center, back to the temple, a devotee told me, he said, drink sugar cane. And, and I thought, well, that sounds a nice medicine. <laughs> I like sugar cane. And so I got some sugar cane, but when I tried to drink it, oh, it was just horrible. It was so, so bitter. And the devotee laughed. He said, this is because you're jaundice. You cannot taste the sweetness. And it, 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 that's what happens. You have to keep drinking it. And it's bitter, but if you keep drinking it and keep drinking gradually the liver becomes healthy and you can taste the sweetness of the sugar cane juice. It takes some time. So, the same way with the holy name chanting the holy name, in the beginning we have no taste. And hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we don't have taste for these things. We need to keep doing them more and more. And gradually the taste will awaken. We will develop the taste for these things. So, it's important that this harmony among devotees can be cured if they will take part in some of these activities. So we try to encourage people. I heard the devotee was telling me how in the past you were having so big, big festivals here and many people were coming here. You were having six days even now. So many big programs and hundreds of people and so many wonderful kirtaniers were coming. And so again, you have to begin these things, you have to encourage people to get them involved, you know. Then the COVID came and it stopped everything and we were all, you know, helpless, we couldn't do a lot of things. But now that's all passed and we have to go on and again continue and bring everything up, up as it was before, continue with the activities. And it will help people also to come back in their spiritual life. When they see that something's, you know, that something's happening, things are taking place, then people want to be a part of it. They want to get involved. I, w I was doing a, in Singapore, we were doing a book fair. You know, a book, there was a book fair and we took part in the book fair. And there were these people in the next book, they were Christians, 
and they had this big sign up, we need volunteers. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is how to do it. That's what we should be doing, you know. We need volunteers. And people were coming, you know, people want to do things. They, they have nothing to do. They're looking for things to do. They want to find some engagement. We have so much work. To, there's so much to be done. You know, we have so much land, we have cows, we have the deity. There's so many things to be done. We have to get, you know, attract people, get them to come and come forward and take part. So that way it helps us to overcome the disharmony among devotees. Okay? And then the response of the doorman to the curse of the sages. How did the doorman respond? Jai and Vijay. When the laughing. sages cursed them. Hmm? Laughing. Hmm? They were laughing. The doorman. Oh, I, oh, when they gave the curse. Or, I, I, I didn't see it. No, no, they were not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> They've been cursed. Right? Yeah, it, I was wrong. Uh, why, how did the, how did the door, the door, how did the doorman respond? They directed it to him and also repeated it. Yes, they, well, initially they had not recognized the four Kumaras. They were thinking, young boys, you know, little boys coming, they cannot be qualified. But then when they, they had cursed them, that the, when they had spoken and they'd revealed their, you know, their spiritual position, then the two gate do doorkeepers, Jai and Vijay, they realized they'd made a great mistake and that they were great sages. And so they felt guilty, they felt... Just like we heard about Diti, she was repentant, she'd done something wrong and she felt guilty. So these doormen also, they were repentant, they felt sorry which what they'd done. It. And the, but they requested, that since it, because the four Kumaras had cursed them to go to the material world and to live in the material world. And so what did the, the two doormen request? They requested that well, if we have to go to the material world, then please don't let us forget the personality of God. That, all right, if we have to go to the material world, we can accept that. But please don't let us ever forget our position as servants of the personality of God. And of course, it happened that the curse was. They, they, they went as demons. They had to become de very demonic persons, but they never forgot the personality of Godhead. They were always thinking that <laughs> we're going to kill God, we're going to get Vishnu, we're going to kill him, I'm going to find him out, I'm going to kill him. You know, they were always thinking. They were thinking about him in anger. They never forgot him. But they were just, they were not thinking about him in a loving way, but in an angry way. And so, they got that benediction. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um. Okay. Why the Lord immediately appeared after the doorman had been cursed? Why did the Lord immediately appear? Wasn't it that he felt responsible for what his servants had yes, done? Yes, right, yes, very good. Yeah. Right. He, he, and the Lord knew that his uh, two gatekeepers had offended the four Kumaras. And so Lord Padmanabha, when he comes, you know, he, he's talking like that. Uh, that he says, uh, I'm responsible. They're my servants. So he said, any offense of my, done by my servants, it's my, it's my fault. Just like, you know, we, we all used to distribute books 
and we used to be very passionate in distributing books, you know, and we'd really try to distribute as many books as we could. And not everybody would appreciate that. And sometimes people would write to Prabhupada and they would say that, I met one of your disciples and he forced me to buy a book. <laughs> he forced me to give him a donation, you know. <laughs> Something like this, you know. And Prabhupada wrote back to the man and said, Oh, I am very sorry. Prabhupada would apologize to the man because they were, he said, they're my disciple. He said, but then Prabhupada would also preach to the man and also explain that you have to understand that these devotees, they have surrendered to me and they have taken up this process of bhakti yoga and they have committed themselves to it and they're genuine in their attempt to try to distribute Krishna consciousness and they may have been a little bit uh, pushy and aggressive in trying to introduce Krishna consciousness to you but that is just their enthusiasm that they genuinely desire your welfare so please forgive them and forgive me also because they're my disciples, so I'm also responsible, like this. So the same way Lord Padmanabha comes and he's speaking to uh, the four Kumaras and he's requesting them to forgive the two doorkeepers, that, to be kind upon them. So this is important for us also, 1543. Uh, I can't remember what, what that verse is. Chant. Oh, that's the verse. Uh, this Tashyara Vindam Naya Right? This is on 1540. So, how is this verse used? This is used to show that people who are attached to the impersonal Brahman can also be, uh, become attached to the personal feature of the Supreme Lord. The brahma impersonalists, they can also be attracted by the beauty of the personality of Godhead. And this, this is the important verse. Even though they were attached to the impersonal Brahman, they became attracted to the form of the the Lord. So we try to encourage in dealing with impersonalists, we try to attract them, especially the holy name, the chanting of the holy name and prasadam. When Lord Chaitanya was in Benares, he met with Prakashananda Sarasati and all the Mayavadi sannyasis. Lord Chaitanya usually never liked to meet them. Lord Chaitanya was happy to be on his own chanting and dancing. But because his devotees like Tapana Mishra and Chandrasekhar were feeling difficulty because so many people were saying bad things about Lord Chaitanya. They were speaking about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Other people were saying, oh, he's just a sentimentalist and he's supposed to be a sannyasi in the line of Shankaracharya, he's meant to study Vedanta, but he spends all of his time chanting and dancing. So he must be a sentimentalist. And so Chandrasekhar and Tapanamishra were very disturbed. They could not, they didn't know how to respond. They didn't know how to answer this. And Prabhupada said, actually, he said, this means they were Kanista Adhikari. That they were they didn't know how to defeat the arguments of these other people. So Lord Chaitanya took sympathy on them and when the invitation came to come to the Brahmana's house for some function, Lord Chaitanya usually he would not go this time. He went and he went there and he met with the Mayavadi sannyasis, Prakasananda Sarasati, 
all these other mayavadis and of course they were they were asking him you know why don't you study vedanta with us and chaitanya mahaprabhu said yeah i already know vedanta <laughs> right chaitanya mahaprabhu is krishna himself vedanta krit veda vedeva jaham he's the author he's the compiler of the vedas so certainly he knows the veda he knows vedanta Anyway, they discuss Vedanta and Lord Chaitanya explained Vedanta to them and then they chanted Hare Krishna. They, they all chanted Hare Krishna. All the Mayavadi sannyasis chanted the Maha Mantra and Lord Chaitanya then took prasadam with them because they chanted Hare Krishna Mantra. So now they were no more the Mayavadis, they were, now they were devotees because they chanted the holy name their spiritual, their, their path to the personal understanding had begun. And Lord Chaitanya took prasadam with them. And usually we will never eat prasadam with these people because they're impersonal. But after they chanted the holy name, now they're becoming Vaishnavas. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took prasad with them. So it's very nice. That's the power of the holy name. And here, here we see just the, the aroma, the aroma of the tosi leaves from the toes of the lotus feet attracted them. So nice. So here you see, this is all from the purport 1545, the highest yoga to concentrate the mind 24 hours a day on Krishna. There are some very long purports in that section at the end of the chapter. If you have time, it would be good for you to go through them and make notes about them. And here Prabhupada Prophet writes, when one is sufficiently trained and acts in submissive faith and love for Krishna under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, the dovetailing process becomes more firm and accurate. This stage of devotional service by the devotee in Krishna consciousness is the most perfect stage of the yoga system. So the importance of working under the direction of the spiritual teachers and training, we have to all be trained in Krishna consciousness. And we have, we have to practice chanting the Maha Mantra especially. Our real spiritual life begins when we start to chant the Maha Mantra. Okay. The entanglement of the living entity in the material world. Okay. So that's, those are some of the points. I just want, I thought it was good to review these things, go through them again. Alright, so we'll go ahead to the next. <laughs> Maybe, anyway, we'll see what, what's going on in the next chapter. The two dormant giant Vijay cursed by the sages. Let's see. There's some familiar faces there. Mm -hmm. So we reviewed all these things. 
of chapter 15. The two doorkeepers of Vaikuntha, Jai and Vijay, cursed by the sages. First of all, Lord, Lord Padmanabha took responsibility for the mistake of Jai and Vijay and sought forgiveness. The Lord explained he would cut off his arm if it were if it were if it were hostile to his devotees because he is the because he is the servant of his devotees his lotus feet have become so pure so this is the relationship between the Lord and his devotees. How much the Lord cares for his devotees. He says here that he, sh he will cut off his arm if it is found to be hostile to the devotees. So Jai and Vijay, they they hadn't, hadn't been particularly aggressive, but they just restricted the four Kumaras. No, of course, four Kumaras took it very badly, quite angry. And Lord Padmanabha came to resolve the situation, to mediate. It's important in these kind of situations we have to be ready to hear. Sometimes it happens like that, you know, there'll be big fights. One time in Mayapur, there was a big fight. <laughs> you know, it was the early years and some devotee was working in the fields and somehow he got in a big argument with the local villagers. And at one point he picked up this big pole and he was whirling it around, you know, around his head, you know. And people, the villagers were trying to get at him and he was just whirl, whirling this big stick around. And, and Prabhupada was watching from the roof and he saw, and he, Prabhupada was like, oh no, what is, look at what is happening. And he turned to Tamal Krishna Goswami and said, go and stop them, go and stop them. So, <laughs> Tamal Krishna Maharaj used to get these kind of services sometimes from Prabhupada. And so he comes, he has to go running down the stairs, run across the field, run through all the mud, the rice fields, and, and he, he comes up to where they are and he just falls on the ground and says, please accept my humble obeisances. And then the, they all stop calm the issue. But sometimes, you know, we get these incidents, we get very upset, we get very angry, it's very sad. We definitely have to be very careful in dealing with devotees. You know, there are three situations which are very dangerous for someone. One is taking care of cows. It's a great responsibility to take care of cows. If you don't take care of the cows properly, then you get heavy karma for them. And then the second thing is taking care of deities. To have deities, you must, if you bring the deity, you must take care of the deity. You have to look after it. The deities have the very nice clothes. I see today is very beautiful. The dress is very nice. It would be nice to have more flowers. They don't get garlands. I, I saw yesterday they had a garland. I don't know what the garland was made of. No, it was fake. It, was, it wasn't a real flower garland. No. I, I thought that. It's not real garland. The, Kavi Chandra Swami preaches in Japan and he told me in Japan also they he said they put silk garlands around the deity. And I was in Zurich. In Zurich, they offer flowers once a week. Once a week, the deity gets a garland. They say flowers are just so, they just can't afford them. It's just so much. 
But here you grow flowers, you know. Yeah, but they start to come now. And they start yes, just coming uh, now. The tagetes, which they use in India, this orange one. Yeah, yeah. They start to come now more and more. Yeah, I see, yeah. And then we make... The orange, orange one, that's a marigold, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. marigold. Yeah. yeah, I saw many flowers. I was out today walking and I thought there's so many flowers growing around. And even if you don't have flowers, you could use leaves. You can fold leaves mm -hmm. nicely and make a garland, you know. So. But anyway, deities are not very big. They look very beautiful. And you put nice jewelry on them. It's very good. It's, it's difficult. I, in in Radhadesh, I think also they didn't have flowers. Maybe once a week also there. Difficult. In Hong Kong, we manage. Somehow we do it every day. In Hong Kong, we make garlands. They have garlands for the deities. And we have big, big deities, marble deities, and big and small. And Prabhupada. So they make, they make garlands. We, somehow we keep it up. We've been doing it. In Malaysia, you know, in Malaysia flowers are so cheap, it's amazing, you know. You know, you know. here we do Tulsi Puja, offer one flower. There you do Tulsi Puja, get a bit, they give you a big dish full of flowers. <laughs> it's because flowers, Malaysia is a hot country and flowers are growing easy all year, you know. You can go outside and pick them. And anyway, you can pick them. You have these. Champaka trees, you get flowers very easily. It's nice. It's very difficult here in the winter time, we don't get flowers, of course. In London also, I don't know how they manage in London. It, we used to, well, in the beginning, we only had the one, de one deity in there. Well, no, we had Jagannath also. Somehow Krishna provides. Yeah. Anyway, and self, I was saying three things: taking care of the cows, taking care of the deities, and the third thing, taking care of the ashram, the devotees. <laughs> That's also a problem. <laughs> Keep the devotees. Look after them also. <coughs> That's why sometimes difficult to get people to be a manager. <coughs> Nobody wants to do it. It's so difficult job, you know, such a responsibility. But somebody has to do it. It's a, it's a blessing if you can do it, if you can make, do a nice job, you get a lot of mercy, you make a lot of advancement. And Prabhupada always appreciated very much the devotees who were managing the temple. It's a big job. So here, Lord, Panab, Lord Padmanabha is saying that he would cut off his arm. Just... He wants to get forgiveness, just seeking forgiveness for his devotees. So the feature of Bhakta Vatsala, Lord Krishna is not Jnana Vatsala or Karma Vatsala, but he is Bhakta Vatsala. He reciprocates with the devotees, those who have love. So that's an important qualification. And certainly Jai and Vijay were devotees and they had love for the Lord. The Lord is concerned about them, so he's come. The Lord then requested that the doorman be allowed to return soon, right? It said they were offered a choice, take birth seven times as a devotee or three times as demons, right? So they thought better to be demons for three births. Why? Because we'll come back quicker. If we have to go for seven births, it will take a long time.
before we can come back. So let us be the demons for three weeks. Like in the drama, you know, playing the drama. So they had to go to the material world and be demons. Why did they have to go to the material world to be demons? The Lord wants to fight. He likes to have a fight. The fighting instinct is there in Krishna. That's why people here also fight. Because that's there in Krishna. And so sometimes Krishna likes to fight. But in Vaikuntha, no one will fight with him. Because, every, no, no, everyone's worshipping him. No one will fight with him. So he has to arrange for special people to come to the material world to fight with him. And so it was arranged, the cursing of giant Vijay. They would come to the material world. And the Lord could go, he could incarnate, and he can fight with them and have a great fight. So, all of, this is the, all the, the drama of the Lord. And why were Jai and Vijay uh, cursed like this, that they had to become the demons? It said that it happened that on one occasion, uh, the, God, the Lord's consort was coming to visit him. And they would not allow her to enter. They said, no, no, you cannot go. The Lord is resting. So because they, because they obstructed the Lord, they obstructed the Goddess of Fortune in doing her service for the Lord. So they were cursed by her that they would come to the material world. Identify general principles which can be drawn from the example of the Lord's reciprocation with the Kumara. Oh, it's ten past seven. We should stop here. Yeah? Yeah? Go on, sir. Huh? No, no, we shouldn't. We'll go on tomorrow morning. It's the last session tomorrow. Yeah, we'll finish it tomorrow. Okay, it's already one hour. Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada.